Hi, I'm Old Sneelock. Welcome to another episode of Old Sneelock's Workshop. Working on the saw till, up until now I've had options. I was working on rough stock, hadn't really committed to anything. Making the cross pieces, if I make them a little wider, a little narrower, didn't matter. I could even fudge with the length because I knew that 16 and a half was an approximation. I could give myself eh, 20, 30 thousandths either way, no one would ever know. I could even go a quarter inch and absorb it in the 12 inches without any problems. But now I'm joining the cross pieces to the side panels and I have to commit. This one, because of the nice coloring and the way the figure is on it, which is unusual in poplar. Poplar is, is mostly just blank, smooth, slightly green wood. And I want to have this one as a showpiece on the front. So that means I'm going to be fitting this piece to the back. I have to cut this out and trim it to size so that this sits as flush as possible. I'm giving myself a little wiggle room on this like I always try to. If I fit this back mortise first, then if I make a mistake, it's going to be in the back. The first one is the most likely to have a problem. So I'm going to be doing the first one in this back corner. My edges are square. knife wall in here to give myself as much chance as possible to make a nice straight line. And by using this uh, Shetley's Diamond Edge back saw, which has a nice set of fine sharp teeth, I give myself every opportunity to succeed. Now the Shapley is filed cross cut and this is filed rip. Does a better job on ripping obviously. Not perfection, but pretty close. Yep, pretty close. I'm happy. I used to enjoy a game of pool in a local bar every once in a while. And we often played for the price of a beer, 50 cents on the game. Now 50 cents isn't a lot of money, not by anybody's way of thinking. But 50 cents was not money, it was a marker. Who was better? And it was important to me to be better. So I practiced. And one of the ways I practiced was playing a lot of pool. The thing I learned the soonest was in playing against an opponent, you weren't trying to put the balls into the pockets as much as you were trying to make sure that the other guy didn't. So the game was a lot about the leave. If you put your opponent in an untenable position, in other words, a place where he couldn't win, your odds of success improved dramatically.
We call that playing for the leave. Where are you going to leave your opponent? Well, when I'm cutting a piece of wood, or in this case, planing, I'm also thinking about the wood not as an opponent, but what the reaction is going to be from where I leave it. As I was planing this, I wanted to have this area just as square and flat as I could get it. But I also knew that wood has a tendency to split out. And I tried to not come close to the ends because I knew I was going to cut off three quarters of an inch from both ends. But if I did make a mistake and knock a chunk out, it was in the waste, playing to the leaf. Since this was the front edge and on the part that I really wanted to highlight, I decided I was going to go whole hog on the knife wall. Uh, Paul Sellers shows me how to use the chisel to cut the knife wall back and make a little uh, cutaway edge like a guide rail for your saw. So I decided on this one that's what I was going to do. I also cut this one a little bit smaller, thinking that I would pair it back. I'd have a better shot at getting an exact fit. Cutting two pieces at once gives me an advantage in that it lets me have everything line up well, but it has a problem. It multiplies any errors. So I had to be very careful to make sure that the lines were straight and square. Now we have a fit. I have a slight hairline showing on that one, but I don't think it's going to be serious. And this is bedded down in. This surface mates up with that surface and the lines are continuous. I think it's going to work. Beautiful. Mark my pieces so I know how I fitted them. Right, 
left. And the one I was the most concerned about is done. Cool. So now I have the two inch pieces done. And I need to put a clamp on this so that I don't lose my registration between these two and these two. Because once I cut this plug out, I'm going to be held by one pivot point. Friction of the board should hold them straight, but why take a chance? Since I don't have any waste to put a screw in, I'm going to put a clamp in it. Now for me, this is a major failure point. Having succeeded in the two that I see as being the hardest, in the past, and possibly in the future, I have relaxed thinking that I had it taken care of. And that everything would fit just fine from here on out. Now I have to remain diligent so that I keep everything working just the way I expect. And since I'm fitting these boards, this is the middle cut. This is the top cut.
I'm going to separate these now. I have the spacing cut. I need to trim this to the proper depth. And then it's done. And I need to trim this one to the depth and make it just a little bit wider. There we go. Perfect. Now when I say perfect, it's good. Perfection is a goal. I'm not capable of invisible joints. But I can make good joints. And I see this one as a good joint. Nice fit. Now it's time to pick up the tools and ready to do a glue up. If you have any suggestions for a new video, questions about today's video, or any of the other videos on the channel, just drop a note in the comments. You know I read them all. Thanks for watching.